Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. We've got quite an exciting video today. It's quite different to my usual video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can easily burn images and text into your wooden projects. I will be using my Cricut cutting machine in this video to make a stencil, but don't let that deter you when you see it. If you haven't got one, it's okay because you can buy adhesive stencils from all kinds of places on the internet. So you can still do this and it's really easy. In today's video, we have a new arrival, my special guest, the Cricut Maker. I recently bought it from one of my patrons who was downsizing and I'm so excited about it because it cuts and engraves and does all kinds of amazing things. I'm going to start the video with a brief explanation of how I created the stencil. At the moment I'm still learning the intricacies of using the Cricut Maker but I can direct you to somewhere where you could get much more detailed information if you're not happy with the amount of detail I give you in this video. Today's video was inspired by a video I watched on the Mr Crafty Pants channel. Michael is such a fabulous teacher and he goes through every single detail. So if there's anything that you don't learn from this video, please go and visit his channel and I will leave the link to his channel in the video description. Right, so the technique I'm going to be showing you today requires a stencil and really it needs to be a sticky bat stencil and so that's why the Cricut Maker came in so handy because I could make the stencil on there. I used the Cricut Design Space to come up with my design so then it was time to cut it out. So once I was happy with my design all I needed to do was click continue and then select the material that I was going to be cutting which is vinyl then this next page comes up and there you can change the pressure if you want that the knife presses down with. Well, I say knife, it's a little blade. And yeah, so I left that at default and it gives you the prompts to make sure you've done everything and then you're ready to go. I got my standard grip mat and took the protective film off and then I took my vinyl which is um, a black one from Arteza and stuck it down onto the mat face up in the correct position. Next I loaded the mat into the Cricut and clicked the start button and off it went. It took a few minutes so I'm going to speed up that part of the video. Once it was finished, I released the mat by clicking that button, which is flashing. That's one thing I love about this. The buttons flash and it really makes it easy to understand what you're supposed to do at each stage. It just, it flashes to tell you to press it. The next job is to take away all the parts of the design, which you don't need using a weeding tool. And it's like a little metal hook and you just use it to grab the little bits of design that you don't want and pull them out. Right then, that's done. And if you're like me and you're new to all this um, cricket business, you might be thinking, OK, so how do I peel that off the backing paper and put it onto my wooden board? How is that going to happen? Well, this is where the transfer tape comes in. And basically what transfer tape is, is sticky backed plastic and you just need to peel the backing off and put it over your design. And then once it's on, you need to use the smoothing tool that came, well, I, I believe it comes with the Cricut. I bought mine second hand, as I mentioned, <laughs> and this came with what Jennifer sold me and I think that came with the machine. Anyway, I'm using it to really press down that transfer tape so, so that, you know, nothing gets left behind. I need to make sure everything's completely stuck. So I'm being very thorough. And then I turn it over and peel the mat off the design. 
This is the wooden round which I'm going to be using. It's a 20 centimeter one from Amazon and I thought that would be the perfect size for my boiled egg platter which I was making. Now I just need to take the protective paper off the back of the vinyl. And sometimes it all comes off in one go, but you know, it depends on how far the blade has gone through de the design. If it went through the vinyl and the backing paper, it's a bit trickier to get the uh, backing paper off everything because you have to do it all individually. But luckily, I managed to get a lot of it off all in one go. The next job is to put it onto your wooden base. I did take my time to make sure I got it just into the right position because the template was just a bit smaller than the actual wooden board so I had to make sure that there was an even space all the way around. And once again I smoothed it down very very thoroughly because I didn't want for the next step I didn't want the solution that I'm going to be using leaking underneath any of the vinyl so I was very very thorough with this. After that remove your transfer film really carefully and it's time for the fun part. Right we need to add our magic ingredient the ingredient that makes all the wonderful stuff happen in the next stage and it's ammonium chloride paste or gel which I've made myself and I'm just about to show you how I made it and I must just add that I got this recipe from the comments section in the Mr Crafty Pants video that I watched he uses something called Thicket and he wasn't sure whether you could use corn flour which is what I used and then someone in the comments tried it out worked out the recipe and put it in the comments so this isn't my recipe it's the person who left it in the comments of Mr Crafty Pants video and I can't actually remember the name but thank you to them <laughs> Measure 100 millilitres of cold water into a jug. Add one tablespoon of corn flour, or if you're in the USA, I believe you call it cornstarch. Give it a really good mix. Then just pop it into the microwave and heat it for 90 seconds. Stop it from cooking twice just to give it a good stir. When it's finished in the microwave, give it a stir and leave it to cool for about half an hour. Okay, it's time to add the ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride has many, many uses, including in animal feed, in fertilizers, in medicine, even in cosmetics. So by the time your platter's finished and you've washed it and waxed it, it's negligible that there'll be any traces left, but if there are, it's not going to be harmful to you. However, in its powder form like this, when you're working with it, it can be irritating to your skin, to your eyes and to your airways, and it does have a warning on the packet saying it can be hazardous in that form. So you must wear gloves, goggles and a mask while mixing all of this up. Right then, so you need to just add one tablespoon of the ammonium chloride into your corn flour mixture and it's done. That is as simple as it is, just mix it all up. It's a little bit lumpy and gloopy but it doesn't matter. I really had the wrong tool there for getting it out of the jug but you get the drift don't you? <laughs> I'm just keeping it in a little small box with a lid. And I'm not sure yet, because this is a new thing to me, I'm not sure how long it will keep for, because obviously it's it's got corn flour in, so it could go mouldy, but I really don't know about that. But anyway, that's how you make it, and it is really easy to make with just one tablespoon of corn flour and one tablespoon of ammonium chloride. So it's not difficult. If it does go mouldy after a little while, just make some more. Right, I've got my ammonium chloride gel and all I'm doing now 
is using a paintbrush with a small amount of the gel on it and dabbing it on, into all the places where I want it to be through the stencil. And I'm doing it quite carefully because I don't want to push it underneath the stencil. So I'm kind of dabbing it on. And like I said, don't do too much. You don't need a lot. And then I decided to paint the sides of the board with it as well. And I'm really glad I did because I got a really good effect on the edges of the board. I left it for about an hour to dry. And then I removed all the vinyl stencil and took it outside for the very best part. I'm using a decorator's heat gun which works great but you could use an embossing craft heat gun. Uh, it just takes a bit longer because it's not quite as hot. A hairdryer won't be hot enough so one, either the decorator's heat gun or an embossing gun will work great. And keep it moving, you don't want to overheat one particular spot and you will see the design appear before your eyes like magic. I did discover that because this is quite a cheap board and I think even the more expensive ones may be the same, it's not one solid piece of wood, it's several pieces of wood glued together and the heat from the heat gun did start to cause those joints to separate a little bit. Um, so a top tip I would give if you're doing this with a piece of wood that is not one solid piece is to clamp it all together first. It makes it a bit more difficult, I would have said, to use to do this process if it's all clamped up. But it will help it to stop, you know, to keep stuck together and not separate at all. It didn't separate much, but I could see the cracks appearing. And because the pieces of wood had started to separate and I could see a little crack, I needed to fill them because, you know, hygiene and all of that, you don't want cracks in your platter. So what I came up with was uh, using a glue stick, you know, just a regular craft glue stick. And while the board was still a little bit warm, I ran the edge of the glue stick over the crack and pushed quite hard to get the glue into that crack and I wiped off the excess with a baby wipe and then I sanded it and the sawdust that is created by sanding it all went pushed into that crack and helped to give it a natural looking seal. Hopefully you won't have to do any of this because it hopefully won't happen to you. You know, I've given you the um, heads up that you really need to clamp it um, from the sides with a big clamp to keep it all together. But if it does happen to you, you can see that it's easily remedied. I did try doing um, filling the little cracks with some wood filler and it really didn't work well. Um, I think it's because I used a coloured, a brown one, a brown wood filler, and it stained the wood around the crack and I couldn't wipe it off or sand it off. It just stained instantly, so I wouldn't recommend using a coloured wood filler. Anyway, problem solved. <laughs> and you can see from the edges how amazing that wood grain comes out through doing this process. I just love the edges of these boards. It's my favourite part, actually. <laughs> Right, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of richness to the colour of my board and I didn't have a food safe wood stain so I decided to use a tea bag like you do and it worked really well so I'm just adding some boiling water from the kettle, letting the tea bag sit for a little bit and then I just wipe the board over with the wet tea bag and it worked a treat it really was good it actually works better if you do it twice let it dry let your first layer dry and then do it again and you get a richer color but yeah i really love that for a food safe wood stain as you can see once it dried out it looks like it's faded a little bit but don't worry, you'll see it come back to life in a second. I used some butcher's block, wood oil and wax. And it's obviously, it's for butcher's blocks, chopping boards and things. So it's food safe. It's all natural products. And you just rub it in in, circular, in a circular motion. 
and it brings it to life. And you just leave it an hour and then buff it and repeat the process and until you get it just how you want it. And this stuff is really good to use every now and again on all your chopping boards just to bring them back to life. And here we have the finished platters all ready with their egg cups and soldiers on. Does everyone else call them soldiers? Is that just an English thing? I don't know. <laughs> I call those soldiers. Anyway, it's all ready and I love them. I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. And this technique can be used on all kinds of different projects. I'd quite like to do a chopping board or a serving board with resin on and with text on. So I think that might be my next project. I've just uploaded a video showing how I made those egg cups. So if you would like to see how I made those, just click the picture on the left. And that's it for today. So if you've enjoyed the video and you haven't already subscribed, please do. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.